The bad news is that the Fed has become extremely aggressive and hawkish. The good news is that we are beginning to get data that is confirming uh, that the economy, the U.S. economy, is in recession. And, and if you've tuned in before, you, you know that we believe that, the, that Europe and China effectively have been in recession as well. So now a global recession. Uh, we're also getting a lot of indicators that uh, prices are coming down. And I think this notion that the inflation that everyone has been worried about is quite a wrong way of looking at the world right now. Uh, we believe that deflation is the much bigger risk. We've been saying this for a time. Uh, we've been ridiculed for saying it. Uh, and we were challenged by those who were sure that we were back into a 70s style inflation uh, scenario. Uh, we think the pricing action, uh, and I'm not just talking about stocks and bonds, I'm talking about commodity prices, uh, crypto uh, prices, uh, and, and perhaps soon even housing prices. Uh, that uh, many people will conclude the greater risk is deflation. And as you know, uh, we don't think deflation is a bad thing per se. It is a bad thing uh, the way the Fed <laughs> has approached it, we believe. But deflation can be a very good thing if it is caused by technology and progress. And we think we're going to see a lot of that over the years. Uh, but right now, we're looking at bad deflation. And uh, we're, we're going to have to get through this. I think uh, the next Fed move is supposed to be at the end of this month. And uh, the Fed is out of its quiet period. So all the Fed governors have been traipsing out saying we're going 75 basis points, another 75 basis points. Um, well, we think that they will rethink that this uh, in this month as we get uh, not only more pricing signals, but earnings reports and guidance for, for from companies who uh, will be probably confirming that the U.S. is now in recession. So bad news, good news, uh, darkest before the dawn. Um, we called this segment uh, Finding Growth. We think growth is going to be scarce this year. And as you know, innovation is all about growth. Innovation is also about solving problems. We have a lot of problems now. A recession is going to be uh, providing another set of problems. So lots of work for innovation to do. Uh, and that's where we believe you will find real growth. The Fed is making a dire mistake, says ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood, a mistake that will continue to see markets tumble downwards to the detriment of investors. Kathy Wood and her innovation-based investment strategy has been absolutely absolutely smashed in 2022 with it down 57% year to date. Essentially every prediction Kathy has made over the last 18 months has been completely wrong surrounding her deflation narrative. However, credit where credit is due, Kathy Wood is sticking to her deflation narrative and thinks we are now at the pivotal point in which weak economic data over the next three months will force the Fed to pivot on their monetary policy, which will be extremely bullish for growth, innovation and crypto. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where I will break down Kathy's investment thesis. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Well, crypto had its worst quarter since 2011 um, and it's a much more mature market than it was back then with the boom bust. So that's saying something. Uh, the S&P down 20% year to date, Nasdaq down roughly 30%. Uh, so the stock market has not seen a worse year to date since 1962. And, uh, and that was when the Cuban Missile Crisis took place. Uh, and then what happened after that is we ended up uh, in the Great Society, guns and butter, and uh, inflation took off. But first, the stock market was, was uh, a barn burner. It was uh, very hot from 62 to 66. Uh, when it comes to bonds, uh, this has been the worst year-to-date performance in bonds in anyone's lifetime. And by some measures, you have to piecemeal uh, the bonds but uh, to, to, to try and get the record. Uh, the worst since 1788. Uh, you know, that's more than 250 years ago. 
So it's been a very, very rough, rough market for investors. Uh, we think there is light at the end of the tunnel. The light is that the Fed is getting a lot of uh, signals that will ultimately end up in the lagging indicators called the PPI and the CPI. Uh, they're getting a lot of indicators, and I think a lot of companies are going to be telegraphing in their earnings reports this next month that we are in recession. And I do believe the Fed uh, will do a, a, a double take. I want to spend a, a little time on crypto. It has been an incredible month and fears of systemic collapse have been rife in the marketplace. Uh, so we, we've seen Bitcoin, it peaked way back in November at 69,000 and it is now at 19,500. Uh, 19, it is still higher than its pre-COVID 7 to 10,000 range. And it is just about at its uh, uh, 2017 high. So this could be some support. It's also at, um, it's, it's, it is below its 200 week moving average, uh, which is at 22,500. So there is some concern that that is the new resistance. Now, as we've seen the last month play out, Talk about um, a reach for yield. Crypto personified that. DeFi personified that. Uh, when uh, and, and we knew that uh, the Luna Terra experiment with algorithmic stable, stable coins was not going to work. It was backed by nothing. And uh, I remember we did a, a podcast with Do Kwan. It's still on our site. And I remember listening to it twice because I... I couldn't understand what he was doing or saying. I am an economist uh, by background. Uh, I really do try and noodle through these things. And I just didn't think that was going to work. Uh, and it failed in spectacular fashion in, in May and has taken Celsius down with it, uh, Voyager Digital, uh, Three Hour Arrows Capital, uh, BlockFi almost. It was very interesting uh, to see BlockFi's last funding round at three uh, billion dollars. This is a lending platform, and uh, tried to do another round recently at one billion dollars. He th couldn't get it done, and today it seems that uh, FTX is going to buy it out, or it has the option to buy the equity for 240 million. A rumor this week had it at 25 million, so much better than that, but m much worse, less than a 10th of its last round. And it's not just happening in crypto. Uh, Klarna just announced, uh, I believe that its last round was in the $45 billion range. This is a FinTech company. And uh, it is doing around now at six and a half billion dollars. So big, big down rounds happening very quickly. Or we will put out today uh, our Bitcoin monthly. We started it last month. Uh, and the title is Contagion versus Capitulation. And as you know, if you, if you saw our last report, we have a lot of on-chain analytics, which give us a sense of... Um, of the capitulation in the marketplace, and also a sense of what is going bad out there. The transparency in the market, uh, I think, is the reason we've seen a lot of failures very quickly compared to the opacity in the traditional financial markets. Uh, I think the um, shakeout in crypto has happened sooner and faster. Uh, than it would have in the traditional financial markets. Um, it's uh, interesting that BlockFi uh, uh, is, is going to FTX. We know that uh, two other platforms or companies, Lenden, which is a, or LedN, which is a, um, a lending platform in Canada, highly regarded, uh, also seem to be interested, as did, I believe, Morgan Creek. Now, these, these are people who really know what's going on in DeFi. And if they're willing to step in here, that has increased my confidence to some extent that uh, the systemic risk is diminishing here. 
with time, we're seeing that each meltdown seems to be a smaller one, not the opposite. Um, so that is giving us some confidence. The only reason I think uh, people are a bit on edge here is technicians who, um, th those who really don't follow the crypto markets at all. They, they're just technicians. They follow equities, bonds. They, they don't care what these companies do or, um, you know, what, what uh, kind of fixed income instrument it is. They just have their technicals. And um, just off the cuff, they, they will say, well, if it breaks from here, it could go to 11 to 13,000 from this 195. Uh, and the reason they say that, I, I can see this on the charts, is that's where there is a huge amount of support, where it peaked a lot of times uh, in a trading range. Um, that said, I will say that uh, I am feeling a lot better about what's going on in the crypto world right now. Um, you'll see our Bitcoin monthly. I would say, you know, we're neutral to positive. We're waiting for a few, uh, a few more capitulation signals. Uh, and of course, time will tell on uh, the systemic side here. We haven't heard of uh, another stress signal in the, in the last few days. So, so that's good as, as well. So the, what I will leave with is What's happened in the crypto market gives you a sense of why it's going to work long run. It's transparent. Um, and there's a lot more trust in the crypto ecosystem because of the transparency and the over collateralization uh, than I think there is in the traditional financial markets. And when we wonder, why are the CDSs going up on these banks? We wonder about the reach for yield and how leveraged some of these situations are. And we don't know where they're hiding. Uh, and so maybe that's all this is, is like, okay, the crypto market has alerted us that this reach for yield is uh, it went way too far. And there are too many excesses, too much leverage around it. Um, hedge funds leveraging 10 to 1 when yields are 2% so that they can reach the returns uh, or their return objectives. Uh, maybe there are some problems out there and we will find out. Uh, but for right now, I'm relieved, number one, that we have so many signals that will get to the Fed in some way, shape or form, even if they have to wait for the CPI. They will get into the CPI and that they are suggesting to me that the Fed has already gone too far and that if it increases rates again, I doubt it'll be 75, maybe 25 or 50. I even think that will be a bit too much given what's going on out there and given the recession we're in. At least the numbers, and, and part of this is downward revisions. Originally, the Fed thought these numbers were very strong, consumption very strong. No, consumption is falling apart. So um, believe it or not, it, bad news is good news now, uh, as tends to be the case in a bear market when inflation is a concern. So bad news is good news, and it's always darkest before the dawn. I believe we've passed the darkest place. There are others out there, uh, we are reading them in the press, they say, we're only halfway there. And um, I think they follow algorithms. I've watched a bunch of algorithmic behavior uh, that you know just chases, chases an idea, chases an idea until it stops. And I think we're getting close to that point where they who seem so right with their negative stance over the last year or so, um, will be on the wrong side of that trade. So there's Kathy Wood with why she believes that weak economic data over the next few months will force the hand of the Federal Reserve to pivot on their monetary policy, which will be extremely bullish for innovation, growth, and crypto. But is Kathy actually right? With Kathy getting every call wrong over the last 18 months, it's hard to believe her with her big prediction this time. However, if you look into the data, she may actually be onto something. Commodity prices as well as oil, secondhand cars as well as other consumer goods have been coming down considerably over the last few months. The next card that will have to fall will have to be house prices and therefore rent prices, but if this does happen, it will definitely take the steam out of the inflation narrative. 
If we get lower inflation numbers, as well as weak economic data, Cathy Wood's call that the Fed will have to pivot on their monetary policy will most likely be correct. However, we're going to need the data over the next few months to see if that is true. Let me know what you guys think will play out in the comments. Anyway guys, hope today's video provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.